We spend 112,000 plus per day just on Meta across all our fashion brand clients. And this is the ad strategy we use. In this video, I will cover step-by-step -step the fundamental ad strategy we use to scale over 15 fashion brands. So the campaign structures, the ad sets, ads per ad set, funnel setup, etc. And I have this handy dandy drawing board to give you more visuals. And I will be covering creatives and copy strategy here because I already made videos on those two topics that you can check out after on our social media. I say fundamental strategy because a majority of our strategy are timeless fundamentals. While other parts can change over time with the market, maybe meta changes, emerging trends, or trends that died off but are now re-emerging, etc. Plus, one of the issues I see from speaking with many fashion brand founders when it comes to their ads is they, or whoever's running their ads, maybe their agency or whatever, are missing the fundamentals. Some rely too much on Advantage Plus or Advantage Shopping campaigns and think Meta will just magically do everything for them because their AI is super advanced. Which is true that their AI is super advanced, but it's the wrong justification. Some are testing creatives, but they aren't being tested with a purpose or they aren't building on top of what they are testing. Meta is clearly giving them signs that they have winners and to scale them, but it's not being taken advantage of. And other times, they just don't have a cohesive strategy in place. Their campaigns are all over the place, or there's just too many campaigns, and they don't help each other. Well, these core issues then lead to surface-level issues, like ROAS completely tanking when they increase budget to scale, or their sales plateauing, or they are spending like a 1K to 3K plus a day, or even 10K plus a day. But for some reason, their ads are being served to the same pool of audiences, and they aren't able to reach new audiences to scale further. So if you're experiencing these problems or similar problems right now, you can apply this strategy or specific parts of it yourself to solve those problems and get better results. Or if you're interested in us applying this strategy for you instead and help you scale your fashion brand, you can book a call with the link in bio on Instagram or with the Calendly link in the video description on YouTube and we can discuss further. Quick background if you're new here, I'm Brandon, one of the co-founders of Digiceptual. We specialize in scaling fashion brands for over four years. Here's some of the fashion brands we scale. And if you want to see the 14 plus testimonials, video and written from clients, again, you can check out the link in bio on Instagram or the link in the video description if you're on YouTube. It's at gold.digiceptual.com slash fashion. And you'll see some of the testimonials that look like this. Now, funnel, let's dive into it. I'll first quickly cover our funnel approach because this will give you context on our strategy. So as you may know, in a, mark, in a marketing scenario, there's obviously mainly three parts, right? Imagine there's a funnel, there's top of funnel, middle, and bottom, right? So our ad strategy focuses heavily on top of funnel because AKA getting new customers, not remarketing because there are infinitely more strangers than existing customers. So maybe if you've seen uh, this explanation, this could be a reminder for you, but if you're new, look, this is like your total market share. Let's say you're selling like fashion, the fashion market share is probably like in the billions. And let's say you're doing, I don't know, 300K, 500K a month, even 100K a month, like you're probably like, like this, all right? So you occupy that, that much of the market share. So that means there's infinitely more strangers, AKA money from new customers and existing, which is why we focus on, again, the top of funnel. On average, we spend 96% of ad spend on top of funnel and 4% in middle and bottom of funnel. So you see how this split evenly? It's not really like this. So really it's usually like this. So we have it like this, maybe like here's top, middle, bottom. So 90, like on average, 96% of our ad spend is on top of funnel. On accounts where it's higher spend, for example, like 3K plus a day to even 10K plus a day, the percentage of ad spend at TOF is usually around 75 to 90% on average because of the volume and brand size. So this can obviously shift. So maybe let's say, for example, if you're a high spend, if it's a high spend fashion brand, it could be maybe like, let's say like this, right? Because like given the amount of volume we're pushing on top of funnel, obviously there's a lot more to retarget on middle and bottom of funnel, right? So that, which is why we would allocate more, if it's a higher spend, more to the retargeting side as well. Now, Let's dive into the ad strategy. Well, first I'll cover TOF since that's the main focus, then MOF and BOF and win back campaigns. Since the majority of ad spend is on TOF, we have to make sure that they're actually going to going after new customers, which means our TOF campaigns exclude these audiences. Lifetime customers, lifetime email subscribers, anyone who has visited the website in the past 180 days, and anyone who has engaged the brands, Facebook and Instagram in the past year, whether it be likes, comments, etc. And to further ensure TOF are going after new customers, on Clavio, we make a connection with Meta that any new customer or email subscriber that comes in, are, whether it be organic, 
or ads are automatically added to the excluded audiences, which is the lifetime customers and, oh, there's like a little typo here, lifetime customers and lifetime email subscribers, right? So that covers the exclusion. So more context, TOF campaigns should have these exclusions so they actually go after new customers. Otherwise, it's just a glorified retargeting campaign. Now, TOF testing, let's go into creatives. This is the first one. Now, this is the first TOF uh, campaign. All testing is done in ABO campaigns only, not advantage shopping campaigns, which is ASC, because with ABO, we have control of exactly what is going on. Whereas with ASC, we don't know because that's where Meta has the most control, meaning no one knows exactly how it works. It's a black box, right? It's a black box because Meta has control of this. We don't know, like, what are they actually doing? Audience is broad so that this variable is constant, meaning if the test doesn't convert, then we know it's the ad, not the audience. Each ad set has six ads in it. So imagine it like this. So let's say on a campaign level, this is like, this is, um, let's say TOF testing. I'll just put it for T, campaign level, right? This is T. Now, each ad set has six ads in it. We test five ad sets per week minimum, meaning at least 30 ads per week. So again, imagine they have one ad set here, right? Add set one, excuse my beautiful handwriting, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six ads. And then same thing over here, right? You'll get the point, one, two, three, four, five, six, on and on. So there's at least five of these. So 30 ads minimum per week. At least two of the ad sets, so let's say, uh, these are a different color here. So at least two of the ad set, uh, two of the ads, sorry. Um, oh wait, no, Pfft, I, I, got, I got it mixed up. At least two of the ad sets, so over here, so imagine, imagine let's say at least two of the ad sets are interactions of winners, meaning iterations of winning ads. This is where we build on top of proven testing. So, so two, if two assets are um, or interaction of winners, that means we'll have twelve ads that are interactions of winners. At least two ad sets are new concepts, meaning new angles or creative ideas that we test that we want to test, right? And again, that'll be twelve of these. And one ad set is other, meaning this is something we and the brand come up with, with the test can be some out of the box angle, right? So we leave it for other. So again, two ad sets, right? For winners, two for iterations, oh no, the two for new concepts and one ad set for other. Now the key with testing is not just to find winning ads to scale, and I'll cover how we scale later, but finding winning ads with different types of creatives this is very key. The reason why this is key is because we are forcing Meta to go to different audience types of audiences with different types of creatives. So for example, maybe uh, creative certain audiences will buy from still images. Still images, right? It will go to a certain audience. So imagine, imagine this is the meta audience, right? So certain audiences will buy from still images. So let's say red is still image, right? Still images. Maybe certain audiences will buy from video. Maybe video. Certain audience might buy from carousels. So carousels. Maybe certain audiences will buy from GIFs. So, oh, let's just use the same color. Yes, right? And uh, you get the point. This way, we won't plateau at a certain spend by being stuck in the same audience pool. One of the reasons why fashion brands get stuck in the same audience pool, even though they can be spending 3K to even 10K plus a day, is they found a specific type of creative that is a winning ad. Let's say, for example, it's flat lays, right? Here's a client example. Let's say it's flat lays. Well, all they do is keep making flat lays because it's winning, which is logical, right? Of course it is. However, it will cap out at a certain point because the algorithm is then trained to, is, is then trained on serving flat lays to the audience that buys from flat lays only. So you need, even if they increase ad spend, the ROAS or the ROAS tanks or the MER or market efficiency ratio gets out of range. And even if they make variations of flat lay creatives, Meta still identifies it as a flat lay and will still serve it to the same audiences that buy from flat lays. Because at the end of the day, it's an AI. So like imagine like you you serve like you, you reach this audience, you could be doing like You'd be like multi seven, like maybe like eight figures a year, right? You could even be stuck in the same audience. But at a certain level, you're just cap out because you just max train the AI to just like focus on this pool. And then once you try to expand outside, it dies. It like it tanks because like maybe sir, this this audience prefers video, but it doesn't buy from still images, right? So the key is always key to, to test and find winners with different types of creatives. So Meta, so let's say Meta is blue, right? So Meta will go to different audiences right, different audiences instead of being stuck in one, right? And this way, that's how you can really unlock scale by tapping into all these audiences. Now, TOF testing audiences. Now here we're talking about uh, audience testing campaigns. We like to test around 10 to 15 audiences per week. Now audiences can be a mix of lookalike audiences and interest audiences and also, oh yeah, I forgot. And also, um, and Proxima 
audiences if you use the AI, right? At this point, we know which interest audiences work. So with which specific demographic the fashion brand sells to. So it's mostly plug and play for us now, right? That's part of one of the benefits of working with us. We just know exactly what's a plug and play for the interest audiences, which means the audience testing is usually with lookalikes or Proxima audiences, where if, if the brand uses Proxima.ai, they just do like audience like wizardry with AI that you guys can look deeper and it's outside the scope of this video. Well, audience testing may sound old, old school, because most people just stick with broad, which we do, of course, but we don't like leaving money on the table, right? If we can always scale, like why would we, Why if we can always make more money, why would we leave the money on the table when, it's, when, we be, when it can be part of the strategy, right? So we don't like to leave money on the table. Some other quick details before we go into TOF scaling. All audience testing campaigns are ABO, so only not ASC. Each ad set tests one specific audience. And we always test new audiences with proven winning ads. So if the audience uh, converts or doesn't, we know it's 100% the audience, right? So again, let's say on a campaign level, right? Here's the campaign. And let's say we're testing four audiences, right? So we have one, two, three, four. Each of these, this could be like a lookalike. This could be interest. This could be the Proxima. This could be another lookalike, right? So for example, so each lookalike and each ad set. Now let's talk about TOF scaling. While scaling, with scaling, we mainly have two types of campaigns we use. So it's ABO slash advanced shopping campaigns, ASC, and CBO. I'll first cover ABO and ASC. Now, ABO, so these are the campaigns we use. We use ABO slash ASC campaigns that go to the meta shop. So that's where we drive traffic to. We have ABO ASC campaigns that don't go to the meta shop, that goes to the, so it goes to the website. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have ABO slash ASC campaigns that go to the shop, but the ads are DPA, so dynamic product, dynamic product catalog ads only. Now, and DPA works really well for fashion, despite how ugly it may look. Sometimes I've had uh, clients tell me that it looks ugly, but it works a lot, so they're like, okay, the data says it works, then gotta run with it. All right. ABO campaigns that go to, that go to meta shop, but with five ad sets on Advantage Plus, right? So you can see like some are a mix of ABO uh, Advantage Shopping campaigns, some, and then some are with Advantage Plus, so it's a mix. All the, at the time of this recording, Meta Shop is only applicable for US fashion brands. Now, and if this changes in the future, great. If we are working with non-US fashion brands, like in which we do, we work with some in Europe, in Europe South America, et cetera, then it goes to their website, nice, because they don't have to shop. Now for CBO, CBO Meta Shop, these are campaigns, CBO Meta Shop campaign with five ad sets on Advantage Plus. So five ad sets on Advantage Plus, driving traffic to the Meta Shop. CBO, the top four winning audiences, total audience size 50 million plus with five ad sets. Another CBO of top four winning audiences where the total audience size is 50 million plus with five ad sets, et cetera, et cetera, depending on how many winning audiences we have. So what I mean by et cetera, et cetera, is maybe we could have one of this before we have a CBO campaign with like four winning audiences, right? And then we have another one with four winning audiences total. And we have another one, right, with four. Uh, four okay, so let me specify this uh, this more actually. So uh, each ad set will have all four audiences in it, right? With, um, what do you call it? Yeah, each ad set will have all four audience, all four winning audiences in it with a total size of audiences 50 minutes. So, so it's not one audience per ad set, it's all four in uh, each of them. And then we can have more as well, right? And then replicating the process. Now to clarify, when I say total audience size, it means the total audience size with all four winning audiences stacked together in one ad setting. May be a bit of a mouthful, but uh, you'll understand it quickly. So one audience size can be 2 million, right? One can be 16, but as long as the total, so let's say the like X plus X and Y, right? But as long as the total is 50 million plus, right? 50 million plus. Um, that's fine because this is so we don't cap out quickly on each audience and we have a combined big enough audience size to scale because if we just choose to scale individually, like let's say we choose to scale an audience out of 2 million, it's going to cap out very quickly and we just have to restart everything and it's just inefficient scaling. Whereas we just combine it and we have 50 million plus, you know, that's, that's a really, that's a big enough audience size to scale it, right? So at this point, we've covered TOF creative testing, TOF audience testing, and TOF scaling. So that covers this part. Let's just go back to our red, because I like red. So that we've, we've just covered the TOF, right? So get a nice green check mark here. We just covered TOF, right? TOF creative testing, TOF audience testing, and TOF scaling. These are three core types of TOF campaigns we focus on the most because it brings the most scale, because again, we focus on getting new customers. Now let's cover the rest of the funnel, starting with MOF. Let's go to this section. 
Now, we always run MOF as an ABO only campaign with three ad sets. So, for example, let's say, right, MOF campaign, right? ABO with three ad sets. Each ad set has one of these audiences. So, anyone has visited the website past 180 days, anyone has visited, who has engaged their Facebook in the past year, and anyone who has engaged their Instagram in the past year. It's a more old school setup that we found has been working really well again, right? That goes back to what I said in the beginning. Like, hey, maybe some trends are, some, some trends died and then it reemerges. Well, this is one of them. In MOF, we also excluded people who have purchased either in the last 30, 60, or 90 days. So this MOF has exclusions, right? I'll call it EX exclusions. The days depends on the time it takes between the first order and the second order. And this is a case by case basis per brand. All right, some, some brands may be 30, some may be 60. It depends. The reason why is we don't want to show ads to someone who just bought, right? It just looks weird. So any new customers, so based on the data, we have to pick either we exclude 30, 60, or 90 days. And you can look at your own data and see, okay, how much time does it take between the first order and the second order? And depending on that, okay, should you exclude 30, 60, or 90 days, right? It's a case-by-case -case basis. And yeah, and that, co that covers MOF <laughs> real quick. So... Because again, we're TOF focused, so MOF, we just cover the fundamentals here. Now for BOF, let's go handy dandy B right here. Boo. Uh, BOF, oh, this is very, very, very simple. BOF is an ABO can only campaign with simple add to card retargeting. Some DPA ads and social proof ads like, hey, maybe certain influencers are wearing it. Maybe uh, customer reviews, that's, that's like what social proof is. Like other people, Bought your stuff and they enjoyed it, right? That's a very simple BOF campaign. Not much focus on it because, again, our focus is on TOF. And lastly, win back. Now, there's a little bonus. So, we'll put it like maybe like over here win back campaigns. Win back campaigns are focused on getting repeat purchases. So, this is more like extending, uh, increasing LTV. Even though ads are mainly focused on getting new customers, we find allocating a very small budget to win back campaigns captures sales that would have been missed by marketing channels focused on repeat purchase, like email, right? Because not every marketing channel is 100% conversion. Win back campaigns are ABO only, and it usually shows new collections and restocks. So again, this is mostly for new customers. So new collections and restocks, because your existing customers have are familiar with your brand, they bought your stuff already, right? It's not like you could just use an old collection as new to target new audiences, right? That's, that's, that's something different because they've already seen it and probably already bought it, right? So new collections of restocks are perfect to use for win back campaigns. So quick summary. Our ad strategy, again, focuses heavily on the top of funnel, the top of funnel, aka getting new, ex uh, new customers, not remarketing, because they're infinitely more strangers than existing customers. And on average, we spend 96% on TOF and 4% on middle uh, MOF and BOF. And again, on accounts with higher spend, for example, through the 10K a day, the percentage of ad spend uh, TOF is usually 70%, 75 to 90% because of the volume and brand size for the retargeting. Number two, our TOF campaigns exclude these audiences, lifetime customers, lifetime email subscribers, anyone who has visited the website in the past 180 days, anyone who has engaged the brand's Facebook and Instagram in the past year. And to further ensure TOF campaigns are going after new customers, our, on Clavio, we make a connection with Meta that any new customers or email subscriber that comes in, in are automatically added to the excluded audience, which is lifetime customers and lifetime email subscribers. Oh, another typo here. Number three, we have three core TOF campaigns, creative testing, audience testing, and scaling. Creative testing is ABO only, broad audiences, five ad sets minimum, and six ads in each ad set, right? Like we just went over, right? Uh, campaign, five ad sets minimum. Six per one, yeah, beautiful lines. The goal of creative testing is to find multiple winning ads with different creatives, so meta goes to all different types of new audience. Remember, this is key. Multiple winning ads with different creatives. One well, could be GIFs, video, flat lays, whatever. Audience testing is ABO only, and the point of it is just to find new winning audiences to scale in so we don't leave any money on the table. And scaling is a mix of ABO slash ASC and CBO campaigns with total audience sizes of 50 million plus. Number four, MOF campaigns are ABO or only with three ad sets. The audience used here are people who have visited the website in the past 180 days, people who have engaged on Facebook and Instagram in the past year. Plus, we exclude people who bought either in the last 30, 60, or 90 days, depending on the time from first order to second order. And number five, BOF is an ABO only campaign with simple add to cart retargeting, some DPA ads, and social proof ads. And finally, the win back campaigns, number six, which are focused on getting repeat business. Ads are usually showing new collections, restocks, etc. This is the fundamental ad strategy 
we that we that we use that we spend 112k plus per day on across all the fashion brands we work with there should be at least one or more actionable steps from this video that you can take right now for your ads to get better results if you want more actionable fashion ad content check out the rest of our videos depending on what platform you're watching this on and what you're specifically looking for and if you're interested in working with us you can book a call with us either in the link in bio on instagram or the calendly link in the video description below on youtube and i'll see you in the next one